Hello and welcome. My name is Chris and in this video I will show you how to use the easing editor and the different types of easing functions in Expressive Animator. Let's start with the default easing, the linear easing function, where the speed is constant from point A to point B. In Expressive Animator, there are many easing functions that you can use, but let's start with the one that is the most used, the easeboat easing. Now, if we play the animation, we will notice that the ball on the top will move slower in the beginning, speed up in the middle, and slow down at the end. Let's move on to the easein function, which will make the ball on the top move slower in the beginning and then speed up. Now let's try the easeout easing function, which will go fast in the beginning and start to slow down towards the end. As for the hold easing function, the ball will move to the end only when it reaches point B, which is the last frame. If we move on to the jump easing function, we will see that the first frame will make the ball jump to the end. These predefined easing functions are easy to use and access, but if we want more control over the easings, we will have to use the easing editor. To open the easing editor, you can double click on a keyframe like that, or double click on the keyframe bar. And of course, we can always select the keyframes we want and click on this custom easing button to open the easing editor. Let's start with the Bezier easing function. With these handles, we can manipulate the function like that. I will play the animation and see what we have. Now let's create an overshoot easing function. By the way, you can zoom in and zoom out from here or using the middle mouse button so you can scroll in and out. We'll move this handle up here. You'll notice that it overshoots and this one as well. Let's play the animation. And as you can see, we have an overshoot animation. Of course, we can also do that on curved motion paths. Let's play and see how that works. If you're not sure where the object will move on the motion pad when it overshoots, you can always take a look at these tangent lines. So no matter how you curve the motion pad, the object will always follow that tangent line when it overshoots. Let's play the animation and see how it goes. As you can see, it followed the tangent lines. Now let's move on to the next easing function, which is the back easing function. This easing function has an overshoot at the end, which you can manipulate using this control here. And at the end, it will overshoot. Let's play and see. Now we can also invert that by clicking on that button. And now the overshoot will be in the beginning. Next is the steps easing function, and from this input, you can control the steps. For example, now it's set to three steps. And if I modified it, let's say 10 steps, it will go 10 steps, just like that. Next, we have the points easing function, which can be a little bit intimidating at first, but you can get used to it pretty fast. So let's see first how it goes with the current settings. Now I will add one more point. So on the X axis, I will go from 75 to zero on the Y axis. So I get this weird easing function. Let's see how it looks. Moving on to the elastic easing, where we can set the oscillations here and its stiffness right here. Now let's play and see how it looks. I will play around with its settings and see what we get. Here I can change the number of oscillations and from here we can set the stiffness. A high number means it won't be that elastic and a lower number means it will get really elastic and so we can go crazy like this. Of course that's not what we want and I will change the settings to be a little bit more nicer.
For the next easing, I will switch to my third layer. So I will lock and hide the second layer and focus on the object that we have here. Let's open the easing editor. And notice that here we can set the number of bounces and the stiffness of the bounces right here. Let's play and see how it looks. Let's go back in the easing editor and change a few settings. For example, I will make it bounce 8 times and its stiffness I will set it around that number. Now let's see how it looks. And for the last option, we have the sync easing function where you can set its oscillations right here. I'll go ahead and play the animation a few times just to see how it looks. That's a really, really interesting effect. Now I will change its oscillations and play the animation again. There is one last thing I want to show you and that is how to copy an easing and paste it on any selected keyframe so they will have the easing you just copied. I will open the easing editor and click on this button up here which will copy the current settings of the easing. Now I will select the keyframe or the keyframe bar, right click and choose paste. Now they both have the same easing. As we can see when I play the animation. We can also do that for any other easing type, for example the Bezier easing function. Here we can notice there is an input with the easing function settings, separate from the copy button. If we select the numbers, we can save them externally for later. For now I will use the copy button and paste it here. And now they both have the same easing function. I will play the animation. And that's how you can use the easing editor and the clipboard capabilities in Expressive Animator. If you learned something, like the video and consider subscribing and sharing it with your friends and co-workers. I'll see you in the next video.